السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على شف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته As we are trying to think about the Prophet's life, Ayesat was salam, and to try to understand in which way he was uh, a believer, but also uh, what we can call today a committed believer. I think it's important once again, and I kept on repeating this for many years, when we come back to Sirah Nabawiyah, the Prophet's life, to uh, think about or to read it in a way which is helping us to be uh, to get some teachings and lessons about the way we have to deal with our world today and this is the way I will try to discuss this uh, before just one thing that uh, I wanted to let you know because we have lots of uh, brothers and sisters who are interested in the work that we are doing now for the last four, four years with the Center of Islamic legislation and ethics that we have in uh, Qatar, but we are working with a network of students around the world and shiyukh and ulama, but also scholars in uh, 11 uh, disciplines from uh, uh, economy, politics, media, psychology, arts. We are trying to work in all these fields on this applied ethics in which way we can uh, link uh, the Islamic legislation, the Tashri' al-Islami, wal akhlaq ethics, the applied ethics. And we have summer schools in May in Grenada. We have also things that are coming in, uh, in, the, uh, in America, maybe in next summer in, uh, in Canada. We're also trying to do this uh, summer schools, not now, but maybe in the future uh, uh, in the States. But if you are interested, I, I left the, this applied ethic uh, about the center. It's at the booth of uh, Masikna. You can take this. You can also go on the, my official uh, website or, or Facebook. That I know that you are a lot to uh, follow, that you can get all this information about the, the summer school and what we are trying to do. Let me uh, uh, start with coming back to the Prophet's life and try to understand in which way we are, uh, we should understand his life and in which way this is going to help us to understand our situation now. In fact, the right order for us when we try to understand his life is first how he was a believer and then in which way he was a committed citizen. Yet, if we come to his life, and we try to understand the way it is, the way uh, things were done, in the way he was educated as, a, as a, a human being, there are prerequisites that are important. There is something which is important in the way he was educated, and you know he was first fatherless, and then he was an orphan, and Allah, Azza wa Jal, was his teacher, his educator. And there are things that we know about the fact that Al Rasul was Al Muhtar, he was the chosen one. And he was the chosen one, and there are features, characteristics that are important and would be afterward very important as somebody who is living within a, a community. We have in the Quran, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You have the noble character, your ethics, your behavior, your values are great. And this we know from before, and the prerequisites are three. The first one that we know is as a human being, and even before he got the revelation, he has specific qualities that are important and we have to think about them. The first one is the one that I just mentioned, is that al-akhlaq, the behavior. Meaning, before becoming a believer and then before becoming a citizen, this way of looking at things and knowing what is right and what is wrong. 
And for us, from an Islamic perspective, what is coming in from the Al-Quran, what is coming from Al-Rasul, I said to Salam, are universal values that he himself said afterward, I came to complete the values and not with new values, to complete and to remind humanity with what was already considered as right. So when he's saying, when he's saying, I came to, to complete the noble uh, character, he meant they were before and I came to complete, meaning there is something um, which is universal, which is coming from al fitra so they are values and for us it's very important to start with this why because for some of you your fam families came from uh, Asia came from the Arab world came from the Middle East came from Turkey come from whatever from wherever or you were born and converted to Islam here or you came from the south or you are from uh, Latin America or African American. You need to get this right that there are universal values that you are going to find in the American cultures that you have to take for what they are universal shared values. This is what the Prophet said and this is the way we have to look at humanity before even considering our relationship to Al-Quran Al-Kareem and to the Sira uh, Nabawiya. This is the first. The second is that the way he was with the people was through these uh, uh, qualities and values, the way he was dealing, and he kept on dealing like this once again through Al Akhlaq, he was called As Sadiqul Amin. And there is something which is important here As Sadiqul Amin that he was before the trustworthy and the truthful, the one who speak the truth and keep his word was important because afterward, when he had, after he, he, he got the revelation, when he was dealing with people who were not sharing his belief, who were even against him, the, uh, Mecca, he kept on the way he was dealing with them in the way he was keeping his word and also being trustworthy with them. You are not from my religion, you are even against, but what you gave me and I had to protect, I will protect because my principles are beyond your behavior. And you have to remember this, wherever you are in this society, they are not your masters and whatever they say about you, whatever are the insults, whatever are the betrayals, you stick to your principles because your principles are much more important in the way you look at humanity than the way humanity deals with it sometimes. Second. Third, which is important, he was in his society and it was known because he was a Sadiqul Amin, because he was with this noble character, when he was dealing with people, they knew that wherever he was, with whomever he was dealing, he was trying to make peace, to settle peace. Remember when they were building the Kaaba and he arrived, he found a way to keep that peace between people who are struggling, agent of peace. So as before even, he got the revelation. There are three things that are important. The first was the way he was dealing with uh, the principles. The second, the way he was dealing with people who are not sharing his views and the, even the uh, differences and from whoever he was dealing with, the rich and the poor. And the third, agent of peace. A human being knows and you should know that humanity is not simple that within humanity there are tensions and struggles and power struggles and power relationship. Who you should be as a human being and understand that wherever you go, go to Asia, go to Africa, come to the States, go to Europe. When you say, I'm an agent of peace, this is a universal value that we understand. What we want is this positive, dignified living together. So this is the starting point. And then Allah Azza wa Jal 
came to him while he himself was looking for truth. Between 35 and 40, the Prophet ﷺ was not happy with what he had. And there is something which is again important here. When you are not happy with your state, when your heart is not at peace, where your mind is troubled and you are worried, never be passive. Never be passive. A human being is somebody who as a subject, as having a consciousness, as having a heart, is looking for answers. And the Prophet ﷺ, it took five years. Every year he was looking for this, not happy with what he had, looking for something which can bring him peace. Allah Azza wa Jal chose him before, but he let him look for, he let him seek this truth as something which is a, a teaching for us. Many of you in this room, you might not be happy with your life. You might even be sitting here saying, I'm a Muslim, but you know that you are not happy with your heart, you are not happy with your mind, you are not happy with your life, you are not happy with what you are doing or not doing. Don't be passive. Don't sit down and say, I'm not very... Now you have to stand up. You have to take uh, the responsibility of changing your life if you feel that between who you are and what you believe in, there are tensions or contradictions. And this is also something which is coming even before the Prophet ﷺ was to uh, get the first revelation. And then Allah sent him Jibreel ﷺ and there are things that are so important. The first that we understand as believers, before being citizens, we will keep all this as citizens, but we have to understand them as believers. First, the shared universal values of humanity. Because Allah SWT is confirming this in the Quran. When he's saying, Ya ayyuhan nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakari, Ya ayyuhan nas, this means people, this humanity is one. He is one, the humanity is one, and we need to understand that there are shared values within this humanity. If you speak about them as Muslims, they are shared values with everybody, all the religions, and even people who do not believe, or people who are atheists, or people who are agnostics, that they have no decision about the fin or final decision about is there a creator or not. Now the Prophet ﷺ, what he got straight away was once again three things. The first one, we all repeat this, but it's very important. A dignified human being, a dignified human being, and we are, and we have been created with dignity. A dignified human being, the starting point for us is to knowledge. This knowledge is what makes you a dignified human being. Why? Because the only way for you to be free is to be knowledgeable. The opposite of knowledge is ignorance, and ignorance is a jail per se. So if you want to be a free human being, and this is why we have it in the Quran, and this is the way Ibn Kathir, Al-Qurdubi, and all in Mufassirin were speaking about what is the dignity, why the angels both in front of uh, Adam alayhi salam for this, his dignity based on freedom and knowledge, knowledge and freedom. So understanding this, it's important. Why? Because as citizens, if you don't get this, as American citizens, Canadian citizens, as citizens of any structured society, if you don't have the knowledge, you are not a free citizen. You are not. You cannot be free if you don't get the knowledge. So you have, and all the knowledge, by the way, not only the, the called sacred knowledge, meaning Al-Quran was Sunnah. No, the knowledge of the law, the knowledge of the society, the knowledge of the culture, the knowledge of the language. By the very fact that Al-Quran was revealed in clear Arabic, it meant if you want to get the knowledge through the knowledge, you need to master the means of knowledge, meaning the language. And you, in this society, you need to get it right. A free American or a free Canadian citizen should master the language. Because this is you and this is your future. So knowledge what's very important. And with knowledge, of course, this freedom that is coming out of knowledge. 
And this is to be a believer. And this, in the light of what? The meaning of life. It's not knowledge for the sake of knowledge. It's not worshiping knowledge. Knowledge is but a means. A means to improve what? Your relationship to Allah. Why? Because even when the Prophet ﷺ said, I, don't, I, know, I cannot read, اقرأ بسم ربك Meaning, it's in the name of God. And in the name of God is that He's giving you the power to read, but He's giving you a direction to know how to read. There is a direction. So this is why العلم النافع is العلم, every knowledge that is keeping you in the right way. The right way. My knowledge for and with and through and in the name of the right way. So by definition, this knowledge is ethical knowledge. It's connected to al-akhlaq, al-azimah, the noble uh, behavior. And then, if you come to the Prophet ﷺ and you read this, and you carry on, and you understand that what came first after Allah, this light, Allah is the light and He brings you light. And you know that uh, in the Western tradition, when, for example, in the 18th centuries, you had philosophers coming and resisting the authority of the church, the way they were talking about reason was lights. The centuries or the enlightenment. Enlightenment, meaning what? Now our reason, our intellects are light. We are enlightened. Allah SWT in the Quran is speaking about this by saying, Allah nuru samawati wal ard, and then nurun ala nur. Take his light, which is the direction. Use your light to go towards the direction. Light upon light. So the light of your intellect is directed by the light of the transcendent. So you have to have light. Nurun. Namshi bihi baynan nas. That this is what we have. That we have this light that is helping us to find our way among the people. So this knowledge is important. And with knowledge, the first thing that he got from Allah Azza wa Jal was two things. Now I'm teaching you to see what is invisible to the sights of the people. The first knowledge that came was not only the Quran as a book, but the book was talking about the universe and teaching the Prophet ﷺ to see things that were in front of him, but he was not seeing them the right way. He had the eyes, but he didn't have the light. The light that is coming from Allah, in nur Al Quran is Nur. One of the names of the Quran is in Nur. Well, Huda. So, Huda, the direction. Two things. Now that I come to you, that now that Allah is in your life, you should look at the creation around you in a new way. You were seeing moon, sun, trees down nature now you have to see signs with the light in your heart you should change the way you look at nature he converted the way the prophet was to look at nature and all the last verses of the quran and surat of the quran are all talking about nature wal fajr wal duha wal layli idha sajja it's a new way to look i'm here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him, now that you know that I created you, I'm everywhere and here are my signs. See in a new way. Because at the end, it's not your eyes that are blind, it's your heart. I came to speak to your heart, to change your mind and to change the way you look at the world. Second thing that you don't see because it's around you but you don't uh, consider you don't pay attention is the poor people look at all the first verses that you have in the Quran they are all talking about the poor people 
the invisible one, the people who in this society have no dignity now as a human being, your dignity is to see what the people are neglecting. You don't look at the poor people. Why? Because in this life as human being, you are dealing with power. You are not dealing with dignity. And you have this. The same word is in the two verses. Is in fact, And then in this verse, You, give, you don't give the dignity. Why this is important for us? El Iman, as a believer, everything was about this. Why is it important? Because as citizens, we will see. As citizens, we will see. Are you citizens caring about the poor or are you citizens afraid of power? Who are you in the United States of America? Are you with the oppressed? Are you with the poor? Because this is what your religion is telling you. You are the right believer if you understand that all humanity has shared values and the same dignity. And now Allah came to you and tell you, now be careful. Look at the people who are invisible. Look at nature that is invisible. The people think that nature is not speaking. Yes, nature is speaking through the signs of God. So you better respect environment. Do you think that the poor have no power? Yes, they have the power. The day of judgment, they will testify who you were with them. The poor one day will, will, will question and they will have the right question. Have you been respectable? Have you been respectful? Have you been considering who they were with their dignity? You don't care. So our relationship to Allah is to change everything about the way we look at the world. And this is coming straight away with the way the Prophet ﷺ was dealing in his society with the people afterward. But this was what he was trying to have at the beginning. So, there are two things who came with it, with all this. Look at in a new way. And the new way is coming from the new direction. The new direction is Sabilillah. That now you have to put your life in the right, on the right track and you have to come with this and try to understand in which way you have to deal with humanity. And then also something which is important. If you have poor people and if you have nature and if you treat the people with no morality, without akhlaq, you might say, you know what, at the end, that's fine. I'm trying my best. But what came with La ilaha illallah was also you are accountable. Mukallaf. So this is the very understanding of being a believer is that, yes, I acknowledge, but I, ha I am accountable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day will ask me. So this is also something which is important. Why? Because this is the way your religion, your faith is teaching you, be careful. Even if the police, even if power, even if the people around you don't see, don't ask, are not imposing anything, you have to be demanding with yourself because Allah is with you wherever you are. So this sense of accountability is essential to the point that everything in our action has to do with being mukallaf. الأحكام التكليفية is exactly this that you have المباح that you have الحرام that you have الحلال that you have all this we know that they are actions and we are going back to Allah and this is the way the Prophet ﷺ got the first revelations all this is going to have an impact on the way you are citizens if you understand what I said right now you understand that, in fact, all these are the added values from our religion, from Islam, to being a citizen. In fact, just to be clear, the best or the, the best you are with your faith, 
the better you are with your citizenship. A good believer, and we have to define what is a good believer. A good believer is a woman or a man trying his best to be consistent. It doesn't mean that we have no contradictions. We are trying to be consistent. It's an ongoing struggle. We have a jihad with our own self. And we consider, we monitor. We have a spiritual life. A believer is requested to take time with herself or himself to come back to your heart, to question your intention. Question your intention. Always renew your intention. Why are you doing? By the way, why are you here? To have some time to listen to lectures? Or are you trying to understand that everything that you hear should be a way for you to renew your intentions and your faith and your spirituality? If you came to this convention and at the end of the convention there is not more knowledge and more love in your heart, there is a problem. If at the end of this convention you don't get a sense that you have to stand up exactly like the Prophet was looking for an answer to change your life, there is a problem. So you always have to do this. This is the true spiritual, intelligent, active, dynamic spirituality which is Tazkiyat in Nafs. Everything, when we reduce the intention, is to reform ourselves. And to reform ourselves, we need time with ourselves. We have five times a day an appointment with Allah to renew. But in between and before and after, before sleeping, when we wake up, to take time to think about what we are doing with our life. This is to be a believer. And when it comes to this, the Prophet he got all this. Look at the, way, the world there in another way. Follow the path. Sharia is a path. It's not the sacred law or the, uh, the Islamic law. It's deeper than that. It's the path to which you are consistent with the message. And now, when you have this and you are equipped, we also have to understand in which way the Prophet ﷺ was dealing as a member of a community. And the best here is to think about the way he was dealing with his community when he arrived in Medina, when he had to structure a society. The first thing that he did, and you know this, is to build a mosque. The mosque has two meanings. The first, wherever I am, Wherever I can say La ilaha illallah and La ilaha illallah is respected, I am at home. Ardullahi wasi'ah, the, the, the earth, Allah's earth and, and it's, it's vast. And then what we have is to take it as this is home. So the first understanding is wherever you are on earth, wherever you are on earth and you are in the United States of America, in Canada, even if you think that one day you will leave or if you are going to stay and the great majority of you are going to stay you are at home and you, when you understand home means do the best for your home have it in your mind have it in your heart care about your home this is my home and even the prophet ﷺ, when he was rejected by the people who were talking about my people my people, Ya Qawmi, you are my people and I'm at home. You might reject me, you might insult me. And whatever Trump is saying about you, whatever he's saying about people who he doesn't want them to come, you from within, you have to make it clear. Mr. Trump, we are at home, must welcome to you. No, no, no clapping, no clapping. Feel it. Now you have to know this. 25 years that I say no clapping, until when then? The best thing for me, you know what? The best thing for me, when you come to a lecture, you come in silence, you sit down, you listen in silence, and you leave in silence. The silence that we have is your thoughts that are working within. That's all what I want. Think and shut up.
and don't clap about this thing. So, here, what was important is at home, and then not only at home, what is a mosque? A mosque is a simple space. In fact, the earth is a mosque. One of the privileges of the Prophet ﷺ was that the entire world is a mosque. Mosque is the place where we do sujood. Masjid means sujood. sujood. The earth is a masjid. But when you come and you, you build a mosque, you say, I'm at home now. And then with the mosque, there is a direction. I'm at home, but I have a direction. Direct your mosque, direct your life, direct your heart, direct your consciousness towards the direction. And the symbolic direction is the center, Al Kaaba. But Al Kaaba means that uh, we know that Allah is everywhere. He's not there, but He gave us a direction. So He came and said, I'm at home and I have a way. You are at home and you have a way. You have a way. And straight, what He did between the people, He said, Al Mu'akha. Now the people who left and the people who, who, who are living here, you are brothers and sisters. And he structured this by saying there are rules between us. In Mu'akha, it's coming. The first rule is to be connected with your heart. And the second came with the charter that we have in Medina, where he was saying his ummah was not only the Muslims, it was the Jews, the Zoroastrians that were there, and even some of the Christians. You are all from my ummah. I came here to settle, to have a direction, but I consider you all as people of my ummah, not the spiritual ummah of uh, the Muslims. The spiritual ummah will, will stay, but the ummah, which is an ummah al insaniya that we are together and we are going to work together. Agents of peace he was before he came and he said to Al-Awz wal Khazraj, all what you were struggling about or disputing about, now it's over. You remove this. This is power struggle. I come with the power of faith. And the power of faith is peace among the people based on values. And the things that we don't say very often is that the Prophet ﷺ came and he reformed all the procedures in the market in Medina. Yes, can I have still five minutes? Five minutes. Please. I came late and I'm asking for more time. Two mistakes. So, he, was, he came and he was also, so he changed and reformed things. So wherever you come, if you care about the United States of America, it's not to come and just to be accepted. I come, I don't want to be visible. No. He came and he said, look, we are human beings. We are brothers and sisters in humanity. Now, we have a special spiritual communion with our community. Yes, brothers and sisters in Islam, it matters. Second, we are also here in uh, the way we have to deal with, with uh, justice and we have to deal with being agents of peace. So he came to reform. He looked at the market, these rules were not the right, he changed. So when you say, I'm at home, you should understand that you are accountable to make this place better. Why? Look at the verse. The justice before the, between the people. They are promoting what is right. Resisting what is bad. Straight, wherever you are, you build the... So I asked five minutes, they gave me two. Anyway, so... <laughs> struggling. So this is what is important as citizens. And this is also what we need to understand as a Muslim in the way we are working. The other thing which is, and we know that he was doing in a structured society, he promoted education for men and women. He promoted justice. 
he was also dealing with his fellow brothers and sisters in uh, Medina in a way which is making them respectable, making them uh, also accountable and free in the way they were Jews, they were Zoroastrians. He never imposed onto them to change their religion. It never happened in Mecca, even with his own family when he was in Mecca. So this is also something which is essential. So let me now conclude with this. If you understand the three main principles that I was mentioning with humanity, and then the way he was uh, educated through the religion, and now you come and you understand, for you, what does it mean? When you are in a society and we understand that to be involved in the society means that you need to get the language. You need to get also to respect the rules of the society and this is also something which is important. The Prophet ﷺ set the rules for Muslims and people of other faiths and then he was uh, trying to deal with them in a way which was dignified and respectful. They have the same rights and the same duties. And he was promoting education and justice. But more importantly, when he was somewhere and when he arrived in Medina, he made it his home and he tried to make it, to make it a better place. So you have in this society, you know that if we, you, we leak the American constitution or even the Canadian law, if we read this, there are such important values, such important principles. The problem is not the principles that we find in the Constitution. The problem is the contradiction there is between the values and the principles and the way the people behave. The problem that we have with the American society and even that I have with your current president. I have a deep problem with the President Obama. It's a very deep one. And the very deep one, very nice words, very dirty politics. He's the good face of something which is the way they are dealing with people in the Middle East, in Africa, around the world, is not dignified. It's as if the life of these people has less value than the life of the Americans. It's as if our democracy here permits to support dictatorships there and even corrupt regimes. So the problem is not with the value we cherish the American values and we cherish, I finish, and we cherish everything. But there is something which is important is the consistency. So wherever you are as Americans, help your country, help the United States of America, help Canada to be more consistent with the values. And this is the way you are reforming this society. Yes, we have shared values. Now as citizens, we want more consistency. We want to be agents of peace around the world. So there is one thing which is important here, is how do you see this? You have to care about your country. You have to care about these values with people who, have not, who are not sharing your religion, people of other faiths. Be also involved in this. And please, when you care about your society, don't always speak about Islam. This is a trap. They want you to speak only about Islam and to feel that there is racism in this country and Islamophobia. This is a psychological war. That's a way to put you in a jail where you are on the defensive. Stop with this. Stop being talking about Islam and behave as Muslims. That's the point. Behave as Muslims, meaning we need to see you in all the fields talking about education, health care society, justice, budget, finance, everything. Media, we want to see you everywhere, not with the banner, I am a Muslim, I am proud to be a Muslim. No, I am a human being, I am a Muslim, and I am proud to be an added value in this society. You will never see me talking about Islam, but will see me behaving as a Muslim. That's the way. And you also have, and this is my last words, to be courageous. This country now, there is a climate in the United States of America putting a pressure on you that you have to, to behave as Muslims being victims and trying to be accepted. Stop with this. 
Don't play the victims. Stand up and be courageous because the Prophet ﷺ, when he was citizens in the name of Allah, if there is anybody who is promoting injustice, he will find me before him. I'm not going to stop speaking about justice and you coming from all over the world, now building this pluralistic American society, stand up and speak the truth. Say what is right. Say that it's impossible for you to accept that innocent people, only because they are Muslims, only because they were helping Palestinians, are in jail for nothing. They are innocent and you know that. Speak out. Speak out as courageous believer. And if Islam means something to you, there is only one translation, behaving with akhlaq and speaking with courage. Behaving with akhlaq, ethics, and speaking with courage. Be the voice for the voiceless. This is the way. This is to be a committed Muslim and consistent citizen. May Allah help you, love you, and... Uh, Please, don't forget to pray for your brother, for the family. And uh, as I have been saying to all my students for now 30 years, don't forget to tell the people you love that you love them. Because this life is fragile. Assalamu alaikum.